What is up guys? Welcome to today's vlog. Today is going to be something a little bit different because I started out the vlog thinking one thing and then we completely changed it halfway through. So I was broadcasting live to the FSE partners out there, letting them watch the vlog, and then halfway through recording it, I didn't realize that the camera shut off, so I did half of the haircut, and then I had no footage. So what I went back in and did, thank you to Pivot Point, is I had multiple mannequins. So what I did was, I did one mannequin with scissors, one mannequin with clippers, exact same haircut, because I wanted to show you guys the difference between the looks and to see if you guys could even see a difference because a lot of people have questions out there, should I use clippers, should I use scissors? And I'm here to tell you that there's not that much of a difference, especially in this length of haircut. So if you're working in the salon, you're more comfortable with clippers, you can definitely do that. If you're more comfortable with scissors, go for it that way. I'm gonna show you both ways to do this haircut. We're gonna do half the head with scissors, half the head with clippers, mix the videos together to create one step-by-step -step video for you guys. I think you're gonna like it. Let's get started. All right guys, so the sectioning is very simple uh, for this haircut. Most of my men's haircuts are a U shape on the top. So I'm going from parietal ridge around the mid crown and then back around the parietal ridge area is to section off the top from the bottom. Now, what we're gonna do with this cut, and like I said uh, in the beginning, was we're gonna do half of it with scissors, half of it with clippers. So the first part is the scissor portion. My goal with this haircut was to create more of a grown out feel. So what we're gonna do is straight layering, um, seamless layers, so pretty much everything straight out from the head. The only part that's gonna have a slight buildup of weight is right around that parietal ridge area. That has more of a 45 degree angle, so you're gonna see that graduation happening, but we'll deal with that later, uh, later on in the cut. So I'm taking each section half inch at a time and working my way through the side of the head. Now, we're working a little bit blind. This is the more difficult side of the haircut because I'm scooping the, the new hair towards the guideline. I think a lot of us would just start combing forward because that is a little bit easier. So let's say from the face to the back of the head. But it keeps you inconsistent because you would always be pushing your guide into the new hair instead of pushing the new hair into the guide. And that's going to create... Uh, different lengths, inconsistency in your guideline, and then you're going to get to the other side of the head and it's going to be a completely different length. So in order to keep consistency, you want to comb and scoop. So I take a parting down, and then as I work towards the back of the head, the head starts to peel away even more. So I'm showing you right here, as that crown bends away, now I have an even different angle to work with. So I want to make sure that I'm well aware of that angle. I'll lift up a little higher elevation when I get towards the back crown area. Not too much more, but just a slight bit, which will give me a little bit less graduation in the crown. I definitely don't mind a slight buildup of weight in the crown, but I don't want it to be super heavy. Um, and not fit the haircut that I'm going for. So work my way back, nice high elevation, then my finger angle shifts down, follows the head shape, parallel to the head shape, all the way into the nape of the neck. I would say the biggest challenge with this cut, cutting in your fingers, is that you start to pull away from the head because naturally you don't want to be that tight in. And what happens is then you end up with nice long hair in the back that you got to go in with the clippers and cut anyways. Keeping your sections nice and clean, you can see how clean that parting was all the way down the head, sectioning, pushing it all the way away, clipping it away if you have to, and just uh, that'll help keep your work nice and clean. You can also see I adjust my scissor the way I'm holding it. That helps me cut a little bit tighter in. Uh, it keeps my wrist straight so that I don't end up with wrist problems later on. And it just keeps me more consistent. So I'm working my way all the way to the middle of the head, um, clipping that away again, like I said before, that keeps me um, nice and consistent throughout the cut. So check out that angle right at the top mid crown area. When I do that first cut, that's where the weight is. And then everything else is nice and seamless all the way down. So because we're elevating the hair, what's going to happen in the nape area is no matter what, we're going to have some kind of like extra length happening. Uh, so we're going to go in and detail that dry. So I don't want you guys to worry about how much length is happening down there. I like the texture that we're creating, but I am going to go in and fine tune it in the dry cut. 
So finishing up the last parting in our scissor cut portion uh, of this haircut, you can see the texture. You can see the seamless layers that have been built in the haircut. I think when you cut in your fingers, you have a lot easier time with your elevation. So for me, it's just kind of easier to see it happening when I'm working with this length of hair. Uh, we are going to go in and do the clipper clippering as well. But real quick, I'm going to go through and just cross check everything horizontally. So we cut everything vertically. So now I just want to check my lines horizontally, do a little scissor over comb. I switched to a wider tooth comb. So I was using a 339 comb. I went to the 334, just has a little bit wider teeth, a little bit stronger, fatter comb. And I used my Mizutani solid seven inch scissors to do the scissor over comb work. Now I'm going to use the Supra ZR clipper. This is from Andis. It's a motorized clipper, super powerful. And I'm using my YS Park 209 comb to go through it. And I'm working horizontally. So this is the big difference between what I did uh, with the scissors. I went in vertically. With a clipper, I like to go in horizontally. I can work my elevation uh, throughout there, just making sure it's nice and high, parallel to the head. And I work my way up the head shape. Then I can go back in, maybe a diagonal back feeling to it, which I will, um, but it's just a lot easier to work with a clipper horizontally. Some of that extra length, I'll grab it up in my hand and put it into the comb and then cut it off just to get myself started. And then I'll work my way up the head shape the same. So the difference between the two techniques, if we look at scissor cutting and clipper cutting, there really isn't that big of a difference. We're holding the hair basically the same. I created texture both ways. So really, I think this is a personal preference thing. For me, there's not that big of a difference. I can work faster with clippers because I'm used to working with clippers uh, faster than I work with scissors. But, you know, somebody that only does scissor cutting, it's totally cool. You can do it that way as well. I think both ways are great. I like to go in with the scissor cutting uh, every once in a while because I... It, it trains my mind uh, to think that way and to work through it. Um, for some of you, you don't like using clippers, so it's a great way to attack the haircut as well. Now I'm in the crown area and I'm point cutting. Uh, I went back to my DB20 scissor from Mizutani. Love this scissor. Check it out on freesaloneducation.com. But this is basically my go-to power scissor uh, for all the haircuts that I do. Unless I'm doing scissor over comb, I like a little bit longer scissor. But this point cutting, I'm over-directing the hair back to the previous section. I don't want to push a bunch of length into the front of this haircut. What I wanted to do with this cut is have a traveling guide that worked my way all the way across the top of the head shape keeping the hair nice and short. I almost want the top to mimic the side length. So the side length will be a little bit shorter, but not that much shorter. I want this to feel like more of a grown out haircut than uh, a disconnected top. Uh, I don't really want that. I also want them to be able to wear it kind of messy and not have to worry about it flopping over and being too long. So as I go through it, I round off the corners uh, on the layers and then just don't do too much over direction. Even this little bit of over direction that I'm doing right now in the very front, I'm going to counteract that with some dry cutting techniques uh, when we get into that portion of it. So you can see it already wants to stand up. Now I go in, I blow it dry. I'm using my 209 comb from YS Park. This one's got nice wide teeth. Uh, it's the same comb I use for the clipper cutting. And I just power dry it, laying the hair down pretty much the way that I want it to. You can see me running the blow dryer nice and close to the scalp. That's a real quick motion just to lay the hair down. And now I'm going to go in with my Mizutani Puffin, do some dry cutting work around the edges. Now I like a little bit of the extra length behind the ears. So I'm just going to round this off slightly, take up the nape a little bit, but then do some point cutting techniques, lifting the hair up, point cutting into it to shatter it. But I like that extra length in the back. I don't want it too tight. Same thing on the opposite side, pick the hair up in the 209 comb, do a little bit of point cutting in there. Great thing about the puffin scissor is that it's got those nice fat thick blades on it, uh, which is great power for cutting dry hair. A lot of scissors get weak uh, when they're cutting dry hair. Puffin's great for utilizing that power all the way through it. Same thing in the temple area, sideburns. I lift it up and I cut into it using that point cutting. And this is very freehand all the way through it. Even lifting up the hair around the ear and cutting, I don't scoop out the ear. Um, I let that hair kind of come over it a bit. 
all of that's going to build into the texture of the cut. I like seeing this as more like we said at the very beginning. It's a grown out looking haircut with a lot of texture and it's just a really cool style. So now to finish it off, some more dry cutting techniques. We're going to go through and point cut. I know we did the point cutting in the wet cut, but wet hair sticks together. It becomes more clumpy. So you take out more weight that way. So when you go through in the dry cut, you're just taking out fine little hairs throughout the point cutting technique. So that's just going to help build in some of the texture and lighten up the ends of the hair. So when you put product in it, the hair stands up nice and easy. I'm also going to work the round of the head, do some point cutting in there as well. Same idea, just going in, keeping the scissor very vertical, I'm not trying to take the hair shorter, just trying to remove some of the bulk from the ends. Last technique, I'm going to do slide cutting. I love uh, any slide cutting techniques. This is with the Mizutani Puffin, so it glides right through that hair. Uh, slide cutting just to add a little bit of short pieces to the bang area, which we talked about before. This is the Carve Texture Icing from Mercado. It's a nice light hold. This will give you that bedhead look uh, without having a really extreme hold. Like You don't have to worry about when you have longer hair putting this product in your hair and having it pull your hair or anything like that. It's got a nice hold to it, but it's not super strong. So it just gives you that nice lived in textured look. So the product really brings the cut to life. I also want to give a shout out to Jason. He's one of our FSE partners. In the middle of this cut, he was asking, what is the difference if you were to cut this with clippers over scissors? So when the footage failed, it kind of worked out and we got to show you guys both angles of the cut with clippers and also with scissors. So hope you guys like it. Definitely let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video. I might do some more comparisons. So if you want to give me some ideas for different comparison videos, go ahead, shout them out. Thanks for watching, guys. All right, guys, like always, if you like the video, then make sure you let me know in the comments below. Love hearing your feedback on that. I need you to let me know, do you like the scissor cut better or do you like the clipper cut better? Also, if you'd like to watch me film the vlogs live, also get involved in our private Facebook community and join our online classes every month, then go check out the FSE Partner Salon program. It's $19.99 a month. It'll get you put on our hair salon locator map. So we train you, we put you on a map, we share your salon with the millions of people that watch free salon education videos on YouTube all the time. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not a hairdresser out there and you're watching this video, then make sure you go to hairsalonlocator.com to find your new salon that focuses on education and making our industry better. Thank you guys so much for watching these videos. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks. And guys, remember, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button below because you could win this Vibrastrate iron. Good luck. Let me know in the comments below if you've subscribed. Thanks.